One second, please. What happened? Hold on one second. I think we we I think we lost our signal for a second. Just hold on. Yeah, this thing was almost melting. We don't want you to miss anything <laughs> or them to miss anything about you. So. Um, Yes, okay, you could, you could, you could now. Okay, yeah. Yay! <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Go for it. Okay. All right. So, if you're able to join our email list, and the reason that we're doing this is because we want to have that intimate connection where there's not a platform that can take us down or that can eliminate our communication, because literally, what a learning lesson! Like it can just happen. You know, it happened at 5,000 callers, it could happen at 50,000, it could happen at 500,000. All I know is that if you're on our email list, then you are a VIP to us and you get a consistent discount. Is everything good over there on that side? Yes, keep going. Okay, good. Okay. So join our email list, Rebellion Bags, follow us on our app, whatever you like. For this weekend, though, because you're participating in this live, we are offering a discount for BAM, which is B-A-M 25. So it's 25% off of anything on our website that you can find. So I've got a ton of things. I should probably try to get through a few more of them. I literally just been talking kind of about who I am and what our brand means, and I get so excited about that. But I know I don't have a ton of time, so let me show you a few more pieces. And if anybody has questions, please let us know. And if Lovely or Elle will let us know what that is, that would be great. We've got you. Thank you. Okay, so this one is a zebra weekend bag. With our weekend bags, what you'll find is that you have, like again, something that's super lightweight. This one is about two and a half pounds in a box. So it's literally a little bit less than that. It has a dimension of 23 by 19. So this is bigger than your carry-on. I designed this so I could carry a ton of things on a plane, but still have it be my personal item and not something that I had to check or have measured. So if you fill this out, you can throw your coat in here, you can throw a pillow in here, you can throw your books in here, food in here, so whatever you want. There's a lot of room. So that is our weekend. This is our best set. This is our medium crossbody in the Tibetan wall. We've been making Tibetan wall for about, mm, I want to say 10 years now. And this is number one every year what we sell the most of. So Tibetan wool and tub, just something very, very simple, but fun and you know, like luxurious to carry. It has a lot of dimension to it. I'll show you it in the wristlet. So if you can see that movement there, it's just super, super fun. The hair is beautiful and just like ours, the texture of it is like super curly and it becomes a little kinky and like with humidity and it changes and you can get it dirty. If you get something in it, all you have to do is just wash it. Literally, I suggest that you put a towel into the inside and then wash it so that the leather doesn't go through and get wet on the other side. But literally, you can wash anything out of this. Kids with peanut butter fingers who get it in their mom's bags, they can wash it out and it's fine. It's just like our hair. So super fun. And then this one, you carry it on your wrist. So it's sort of the alternative to an evening clutch to something that can be super hands-free and fun to carry. And then we've got, this is one of our classics, the cowhide bag. So here on Hyde, super fun, all different. They all have like a little bit of a different texture or color. People always ask me, is that black and white or is it brown and white? And I'm like, honey, I don't know. I really don't. I don't know what to call this other than that it was, you know, the original colors that came on the cow. And so this is kind of fun. We've got the little wristlets by Rose Hill. This one says, I love myself and dream bigger. Um, they're all just a little different. We've got a lot of these on rebellionbags.com. We've got 
I'll show you something in a minute. So these are just sort of our standard classics. Again, Tibetan wool. This one is in a gray, super fun, just texture, fun to carry out for an evening. Again, super lightweight. This is nine by nine. So people are always surprised at how much they can actually fit in this. We do our fur and our hair on highs on one side only. The reason is it lasts longer. So if you have something against your body that's shaping up and against your clothing, the hair will come off. In this situation, you don't lose hair and it just will last you. The, all of our bags will last you at least 10 years. So this is a fun one. And then we're starting to do something new. We've decided to innovate. Uh, you know, everything has been so strange the last almost two years now. And we literally like went from having a production space with, you know, 1200 square feet and people working every day, helping us to, you know, build our brand to having no one, me at home, in my home studio, making things by hand by myself. And so I like immediately realized that I needed to innovate. So what I did is I purchased some dyes and a clicker press and I decided that I could click these bags up and deliver them to my customers that were still interested in buying handbags, which there were a lot of you, thank God, um, during that whole shutdown. And so my collectors literally just kept us alive and it was a beautiful thing. And then we met a lot of new people because we were coming live and this is all new, like how do I communicate who I am as a person, who we are as a brand, what it is that we stand for, and again, it is rebellion, um, but there's a deeper messaging there. So our intention with creating this brand was that we shifted from it being an idea, my company name was Epiphany because I had this dream, to rebellion in 2015 because I realized that there are a lot of things to rebel against. And so it started off in the height of protests and times when literally I thought to myself, like, what have I done during my lifetime to protest what is happening in the world? And I realized that I hadn't done much, but it was my parents and it was my grandparents that did that. And then I looked to my son and said, hey, get out there and do something, go say something, go speak about what's happening. Like, why aren't you out there with your friends that are at the protest right now? And I realized that I had skipped out. It was my generation that had let us you know, just sort of deteriorate into the situation that we were in without speaking up. And so I decided to change my brand to rebel and to do it in a meaningful way, to put messaging out there that means something to people. So everyone has a different idea of what rebellion means, but at the heart of it, it still means the same thing to all of us. Whatever our reason is for rebelling, we have one. There is always something that we need to stand up for. And if we're in this world long enough, we begin to realize that if we don't stand in our shoes and speak our true voice, then we've probably lost out on a lot. So I'm here to sort of amplify that and to give voice to a lot of the people that I know and a lot of the issues that I know with a beautiful message. So not like adding more noise to the fire, but adding more simplistic, simple messaging that is positive to the equation of what it is that we do in the world. So for me, we started out with just doing our branding, which is rebellion, but you know, that's too simple. So we're going to do a lot of messaging. I'm going to show you something that we just started doing on a bag over here, which is taking artists and instead of having them hand paint our bags or take that time to add that value to it and then raise the price up we've decided to start printing onto bags so i'm going to show you one give me a second super simple just kind of like a first go at it but if you can see this this is one of rose hill's little girls that are beautiful and something that we love and this one says i am more powerful than i know so if you think about that and you apply that to your own messaging of how you feel about yourself in any given moment on every any given day, it definitely can make you feel transformed by just saying the words or thinking the thoughts. And so we're trying to do a lot more of messaging positive in a time when there's a lot of negative that's 
around way too much. So just wanted to share that. Are there any questions for me? Are those up on those new pieces? Are they up on your website now? Some of them are, some of them are not, but I would love for you to honestly just join our email list and follow us along in our journey. This for me is a, a moment to connect with your audience, Elle and Lavalle, and just like really sort of, it's not about sounding this in the moment. I know I'm supposed to show a bunch of stuff and supposed to be really excited about the sale. And I really am not. I'm more excited about the process and the progress and what we're trying to contribute. And so if you come along with us on this journey, you'll see us grow as we grow. And hopefully you'll grow with us because we are trying to make a change in the world, not just a handbag. I realized after selling my bags for a number of years, I started selling handbags in 2005. So 17 years ago. And I realized that I was probably littering the world with handbags. And I know this to be true because I see them on people. I see them as like sort of circa, like I've had this since 2008, or I see it on Poshmark, or I see it being resold. Um, I see a lot of our bags being worn by um, people who are well-known. And the thing is, I don't want to leave the earth with a bunch of leather that I used to create something to keep the lights on. I want to leave something bigger than that. I want to leave a message. I have a bigger plan. And so with that, I need to have some messaging behind that. And so if you join us in our rebellion, you definitely will be a part of like the inside scoop of what it is that we're doing and trying to make a difference in the world. And I mean, as simple as that sounds, I feel like for me, little black and brown girls are like the way of our future. I feel that these little bags that we have and this message that I have in my heart has a lot more to do with where I'll be in 10 years than where I've been. So. And so I, I really see you right in the middle of your journey and the way that you're expressing it, the way that you it's coming through the screen. So yeah, I feel you, I really do. Thank you. Really so do. good to be with you guys. Yeah. So, I didn't get a chance to put anything in the, the messaging or the links or the comments, but again, we're rebelling in bags. Super, super simple. We have an app on, so it's good for Apple. It's good for Android. Uh, we have our email list. We're on IG. We will be back on Facebook soon. <laughs> yeah. All your information is along the bottom of the screen and the links for the apps are in the chat as well. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. I hope you have a great weekend. You're very welcome. Hey, everybody, go take a look at her website and go to that app as well. I think that's a, a wonderful thing that she's doing. I'm excited about going to look for it myself. So uh, Thank you. it was good having, good having you on. And I loved how you expressed your, your change of vision and perhaps your business structure and how you're doing things. Thank you. It's so good to see you both. Oh, likewise, likewise. likewise. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, All Stephanie. Right, thank you. All right. Good night. Bye, guys. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> okay. Uh, beautiful uh, bag, as always. And uh, I love the app idea. Go take a look um, at all those different ways that you can contact her. All right. So, um, if you got lost there for a minute, I hope you found your way back on. <laughs> um, yeah, we just had a little blip in the road. So uh, I hope you're back on. If you missed anything, you know, go back and take, we're on YouTube, go take a look at that. And uh, and for everything, if you came on in the middle of uh, Tite's show, go back and review the video. You'll be able to see the hats from myself. You'll be able to see jewelry from Lavalet. Uh, it's all there for you, including the blip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what live is all about. Stuff happens. So we keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we can't control some of the things that happen to us. So we just try to keep on rolling, you know, uh, and, and that's yep, it. Can. That's all we can do. All, all right. right. So we've got a few more minutes before our final artist of the evening. Um, 
How did you like those bags? I thought they were super cool, especially the oh. hand painted ones. Oh, super cool. Yeah, I like the ones with the little sayings on them. And you know, mm -hmm. it's just it's a nice shape with the, the with those bags. You yeah. Know, the design of them is really, really, really cool. Yeah, it's and kind of like quality, a. Yeah, the quality of the leather that that's that that stands out <laughs> immensely. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, especially that um, Tibetan wool. I guess that's oh. what it was. Tibetan wool. They just looked. I've I've seen the bags in person at the one of a kind show in Chicago, when I used to do that show, and they they're just lovely. They really are. I don't think the screen does them justice. Probably not. <laughs> okay. So, um, so buy one and bring it home. <laughs> there you go. All right. We are one minute before our next artist, and I know Lavalle is going to do the introductions for uh, our our wonderful, wonderful artist who's always uh, a part of our show, uh, Marvin Sin. So it's all yours, uh, Lavalle. All right. See you now. No, he's not here yet, so we can't he's not be here yet. Okay. in if he ain't here. <laughs> okay, so we can't introduce. Well, let me tell you who's coming on tomorrow as we wait for Marvin Sin. Tomorrow we start with um, Sister Fire, who's showing uh, menswear, Sister Fire men's collection, just a, a short 30 minutes, and that should be cool. She's shown a few men's items before, but she's doing a full 30 minutes tomorrow. Uh, right after her, we have uh, Seha with Urban Masala showing her um, wearable arts, and she's out of Baltimore. And then we have Akosawa. She's coming on at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, with her brand of jewelry. She is out of North Carolina. Uh, next, we have a newcomer, Kimberly Pierce Cartwright. She's a folk artist, and uh, I think she's in the Carolinas too. I have to double check that. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. she's coming on at eight o'clock. She's new to the show, so make sure you watch her. And then Lavalle and I will be closing it out from 8.30 to 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you stay for everything. All right. I think we're ready to go now. All right. It's all yours. All right. So uh, our next uh, artist has been in the house a couple of times with us. Uh, he started off. Uh, in New York City, uh, studying art, and eventually, eventually uh, uh, got turned on to uh, making leather belts, and uh, I think that led to uh, 50 years of him making quality leather bags that are very, very uh, one of a kind and very, very uh, uh, an expression of his work and of our culture. Uh, he's uh, been involved with the culture. So for Black History Month, it's very appropriate for us to have him on because he's been a part of our culture. The Black artists that I know, there's not a one that don't know him and his work. So welcome to the show, our featured artist, Mr. Marvinson. Uh, there he is. Hey, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello, okay. everybody. And not just quality bags, a, a, a 50 plus year legacy journey of the art of leather, correct? Yeah, it seems like only yesterday. Ah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's probably how it should feel, right? That's how it should feel, yeah. Yeah, like you still love what you do and you still feel excited about it. Well, it's a, <laughs> it's a source of life and energy, but you know, everybody who's mm. creating uh, has the same experience, you know, it's, uh, I think it's one of the uh, things that has enabled us to survive through these last couple of years. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. Can, can you imagine what actually, this is February, we're coming towards the end of February when things shut down. So we're almost two years into it. I would say right at that point. And we're with, look, we're still here. We've grown, we've expanded, we've moved into new platforms. I think we're doing pretty well. 
Uh, considering, you know, when everything was shutting down, you guys were blowing up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we keep trying to do better and expand, definitely. But yeah, it's been a what, beautiful journey so far. Mm -hmm. Hats off to you. I, mean, mm -hmm. uh, I think few people other than some of your artists and participants have a real appreciation for the work that you all put into this. Um, mm. I mean, from the promotional material of this first class, uh, having a, a test run with every artist uh, <laughs> before they actually go on scheduling that, uh, <laughs> working out the kinks. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, just plus the, the learning curve for everybody who's participated just in terms of how to do this. Right. Um, you know, you brought me a long way in terms of camera quality and lighting, and um, and I think it's been the same for everybody. So, you know, in addition to the project and what you've done, you know, it's been an educational experience for a lot of us. You know, so I appreciate that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Well, right. we're looking forward to seeing what you're going to present this evening. I know the customers out there are as well. So. It's all yours. Well, you know, um, this is Black History Month. <clears throat> and of course, I had a couple of things to say about that, but I'll save that later. But just for to remind everyone that if you are celebrating Black History Month, you have to begin in Africa. Um, there is a process and a project to keep us focused on um, our life and our history once we landed on these shores uh, from 1619 uh, moving forward. But that doesn't account for the thousands of years of African history that preceded that. Um, and when they brought us to these shores, they weren't bringing just laborers. They were brought the people who were the architects and the engineers of civilization for millennia. Um, so don't let them, you know, limit you to your plantation experience. Uh, definitely go back to Africa and study the history and the culture that produced us. Um, so that's, you know, my opening salvo uh, on Black history. Um, the last, I guess, couple of months after the holidays, I've been trying to get into production, uh, restock uh, my inventory, uh, reformat my website. And so most of everything that I'm showing this evening is available on the website, marvinsin.com. And so I'm just gonna kind of quickly go through uh, some recent creations. These are some of the things I've been working on for the last couple of months and just kind of finished. Uh, Sometimes these events, these shows, prompt me to uh, bring uh, thought into action and actually complete some things that are on the drawing board and have them ready to roll. So if we can start with the first slide. Um, you know, these are you know my uh, standard business card cases. Uh, some people use them as wallets, um, but it is kind of the foundation of the enterprise. You know, so you can see one here. And basically, it has four pockets on the inside. Uh, some people use it as a wallet. Um, but there's always a, a work of art on the front. Each one is original and uh, one of a kind. So this is a business card case. Um, they are $55 on the website, marvinson.com. Uh, next slide. So we're just going to... So these are the uh, my cell phone pouches. Um, they're designed to be worn around your neck. You can see a little cord sticking out there. Uh, these have been wildly popular, um, particularly uh, amongst people. You know, a lot of the teachers love them because they can keep their phones handy. 
other folks who are busy doing things. Uh, your phone is right there. Plus, it's an ornamental piece. These are $80 on the website. And I just finished a whole crop of these. So this is sharing the harvest of you know recent creativity. Uh, as you can see in this slide, uh, three images of sisters. The leather that I'm using is very soft and luxurious lamb skin, the very probably the softest uh, leather available uh, in bright colors. Uh, and the design is usually painted to match the color of the bag. So you see some of the iterations here. Next slide. So here, back to uh, the business card cases again, and there are tons of these on the website. Um, and I'm always adding more um, because this is, I guess, the, the simplest piece for me to create. Um, you know, I tend to uh, feature and function and work with these a lot. So a lot of these designs, you see the Adinkra symbol, the Ankh, the map of the continent, um, various motifs, um, brothers and sisters. These are excellent gifts, by the way. Uh, $55 on the website. Next slide. Again, showing some more of the cell phone pouches. In the middle, you see uh, on the orange, uh, two Adinkra symbols, the Sankofa, the wisdom of learning from the past, and the ram's horns. Um, a symbol of strength and humility. Uh, these are from the Akan people in Ghana. And on the left and on the right, you know, beautiful black women. Uh, my favorite theme. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, a few more of the cell phone pouches. Again, assortment of colors, uh, trying to capture the spirit of black women in all of their iterations. Um, so I'm sure if you go and browse around, you'll see something that connects with your spirit. Uh, next slide. And these are, um, I guess, the latest uh, creative series I've been working with over the last, I guess, year or so. Uh, silhouettes. Um, black is beautiful. Um, and I'm working with black on black uh, just to kind of give the spirit or the energy. Um, and I've really had a good time with these, uh, counterposing these with various color arrangements uh, on various uh, size pieces from the cell phones up to larger bags. Um, so these are three of the images out of my uh, silhouette series. Uh, next slide. Another silhouette in blue, uh, a baule mask. And on the right, uh, this cell phone uh, pouch, the red one is uh, an adinkra symbol, again, the ram's horn, superimposed on a pattern of Cuba cloth uh, from my uh, Cuba color series. So that's uh, mixing the Congo and Ghana. Uh, in my Pan-African mindset, uh, we're all connected, uh, one people. You know. Next slide. Um, so these bags are two of my perennial bestsellers. The rounder on the left um, is probably the bag I've been making longest. I think I've been rendering this shape for probably 50 years. Uh, this is one of the first styles that I, I created because it was kind of in my simple um, understanding of leather craft, it was kind of easy for me to make and design. So there's the rounder and then there's a smaller version of it, the medium rounder. And I presented them to, together so you can kind of get the proportionality of them. Um, the one, the medium round, the brown um, with the Janyami, uh, somebody just bought that. But, you know, there are several others available, uh, the medium rounder. So on the website, 
it's helpful also to remember the names uh, of some of these because on the site now, if you go to the site, I have all of these pieces in the uh, Black Artists Market Black History Month uh, collection. So they're, they're all conglomerated uh, in that collection, but there are several other variations of each of these bags uh, throughout the website. And if you, you know, remember or connect with the name uh, and you see a style that you like, um, you know, you can research that further. Next slide. Um, I just have a question about the rounders. Do they have pockets on the inside? The, um, the rounder has uh, what I've created as a uh, zip tuck pocket. So it's a pocket. Uh -huh. You tip, tuck things in, and it also has a zipper. The uh, medium rounder, um, I don't know if I can show it. It has a, a middle divider um, with a zipper pocket, and then there are two separate pockets. Okay. So There's actually three pockets in this one. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen the inside of one of those. That's why yeah. I was interested. Right. So that was the inside of that. And Here's the inside of this, so you can see this pocket. So it tucks. Uh -huh. And it has the zipper. And all of the bags are lined with um, suede. Um, so it's leather, on leather, in leather. Uh, so you can, might as well say they're leather bags. Yeah. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. So here's a, uh, another couple of these. Um, this one, the uh, medium rounder on the right, um, features a um, beaded Maasai bracelet uh, that I've attached uh, to the bag. Um, and these bracelets were actually designed uh, by a Koswa in Tanzania several years ago. Um, and I think uh, Rose Luangisa, uh, an African importer, sells these. But I'm using them as ornamentation uh, on the bag. So it's a very, very stunning detail that I, adds a great deal of character to it. Next slide. Again, here are two more medium rounders, one with a beautiful sister. The other with an, a collage of Adinkra symbols, the Jinyame, the Ram's Horn, the Insarama, and my all-time favorite, the Bese Saka, meaning affluence, power, abundance, and togetherness. And that's the way we, we roll. The medium rounder on the website, marvinson.com. Next slide. These are slightly larger variations of my standard uh, pouch, the new pouch. So this is new too, it's a little bit larger. Um, you can see uh, there are several of these on the website. Uh, and these, I can see one. Okay, you can also see these have a tuck pocket on the back and the zipper on the back. And there's no pocket inside, but very spacious. Uh, if you're going out, hanging out, going out shopping for the day, hanging out for the evening, this is more than enough to carry your wallet, your cell phone, your keys, uh, pretty much anything you absolutely need to have. Next slide. Okay, I don't know where I'm blurring up here. Can you see that? Yeah, it's a little fuzzy, but um, um it's clear on our end. Okay. Yeah. So, so they are uh, again the new pouch, the larger variation, and the actual new pouch, the new pouch two and the new pouch. And you can see the size differentiation between them. Um constructed the same way they uh, each have a tuck pocket and zipper pocket on the back. Each has a super long strap. The new pouches, new two pouches, have a, an adjustable strap with a buckle. The new pouch 
has a long cord that can be adjusted by tying uh, a knot uh, to adjust the, its length. But they're both super long, and you can adjust them to your size if you're tall or short. They accommodate any size. And they're just stunning pieces. Uh, wherever you go, when you wear one of these bags, you become the center of attention. Uh, people will come up to you, where did you get that at? Strike up a conversation. And they have the effect of attracting, attracting to you um, similar interests and similar spirits, and also repulsing and repelling negative spirits. So it's protection, invitation, it'll keep your, the crazies off of you, and <laughs> only bring to you. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. It goes oh, both oh, no ways, question right? about it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> This is kryptonite to the fools. <laughs> Next slide. And these are, you know, another standard, I call these small crossbody buckets, uh, extra long strap. Um, you can see in the back, again, the same pocket, tuck pocket, zipper. Uh, and inside also has the same tuck pocket zipper. Um, and they have a long strap? Extra long strap. So every bag, you know, has a super long strap that's adjustable. Uh, I'm often criticized because I make the straps too long. Um, but it's easier to make them long and shorten them than it is to shorten, to lengthen it if it's too short. So no matter what your height is, uh, you can wear these bags straight down across your shoulder uh, in the winter, in the summer. It doesn't matter. So they will adjust to you and they're super comfortable. And these are very soft bags as well. So you see a couple of variations. Um, next slide. I think there are a couple more that I can show. So here are two more, a black and a blue. And again, um, my work features works of art on functional leather objects. So I take as much time, if not more, to render the art image as I do to create a super functional, durable, aesthetically pleasing bag. So you have both. You have master craftsmanship and visionary art um, on every object. And no two objects have ever been the same. So whatever you get, you know, you are unique in the world. Uh, next slide. It also looks like the artwork is raised off a little bit. It's not flat, is it? It is. So the uh, the designs for most of them are um, drawn, carved, that is, they are cut into the leather, mm -hmm. sculpted. So it is raised up three-dimensionally Yeah. and painted. So you have these four art processes on each piece. Um, and they are like low relief sculptures, you know. But yeah, here's the, um, you can kind of see. The That's strap the size of them as well. Up. And yeah. as I said, the strap is super, super, super long. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, that style bag that you just saw. Okay. Next slide. Here, so this is a little um, fun thing that I did. Uh, you know, back in the 80s, this was all the rage. Everybody had an African medallion. So I don't know <laughs> what got into me, but. <laughs> From 125th Street. Okay. <laughs> right. Remember? <laughs> so. You know, I did a few of these. There's just a couple of them. Um, but, you know, I'm thinking that this is an item that uh, we can produce easily in Ghana. So mm. uh, I'm thinking ahead in terms of how to uh, automate these and, and have them paint them in different variations. But, you know, so there are, there are only five of these in the world. So I don't know that I'm going to be making any more <laughs> either. It's mm -hmm. too much time and too little money to be honest with you but you know are they are they really small how big are they three inches three okay inches. Yeah. so you can see it kind of 
around my neck and it has a leather cord attached. So you can see, uh -huh. you can okay. get a fit there. That's a nice size. That's a nice size. Yeah. yeah. I did a smaller one, but this feels better, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Next slide. And this is the uh, one of the uh, pieces that we had done in Ghana. Uh, our backpack, our first uh, official backpack. Um, and so this is one of them. Uh, I think we did six, and I think there are two left. So they have sold very well, been very well received. And so this is a, a new permanent addition to the collection. And I think that's it for the slides. I think I think. Um, we we have a question um, from Fern. She says, um, can she see the bag hanging up on the end of the shelf on the left side behind Marvin? <laughs> uh, yeah. Fern, you're going to have to say a color, I think. What color? That would help, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that, that would help us if, it's, if you tell us the color. Okay, we're just waiting for her to put that in the chat. <laughs> okay. So, a couple of comments before you know time runs out. Um, there's a a, a campaign uh, to exonerate uh, Marcus Garvey. Um, mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey oh, was nice. um, mm -hmm. falsely accused of a crime that he didn't commit by J. Edgar Hoover uh, as an attempt to destroy his movement. Um, and his, Garvey's last remaining son, uh, Dr. Julius Garvey, um, has been coordinating and spearheading a campaign to have his father's name cleared of these false charges. So there was a petition circulating. And if you go to um, justice for Garvey.com. That's justice for letter number four, justice for Garvey.com. Uh, it will link you to the petition. And when you go to the petition, it's going to the White House. Uh, and you basically type in exonerate Marcus Garvey. So justice for Garvey.com. Go to the uh, website, fill out your information. Uh, when they ask you, what are you, you know, writing about? Just say exonerate Marcus Garvey. Uh, we're attempting to get uh, 200,000 signatures. Um, this petition um, drive was done under the Obama administration. And for some unknown reason, Barack Obama refused to grant this Ooh. pardon to Marcus Garvey. Mm. And they had probably a hundred thousand signatures then. And at the last minute, on the last day of his term, he pardoned hundreds of people, you know, but Marcus Garvey was not amongst them. So the, the effort goes on. And Garvey, as you know, was the leader of the largest mass movement of black people in the world chapters all over the earth in every country uh, and to the extent that we are calling ourselves African, thinking about Africa, thinking uh, about ourselves as black people, all of that is due to the efforts of Marcus Garvey and the people he influenced and the people they influenced and the people who taught us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. So long live the spirit of the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. So go sign that petition. So that's um, justice for Garvey. Justice for Garvey. Okay. Dot com. Okay, we got an answer from Fern. It's the bag on your left. Um, it's a large bag at yes, that side. It looks like it's an onk. Uh, it's a really large bag and it's hanging off the top of your um, display. So this is a um our original bucket bag. So here are two um, sinful images on it. Really large zipper in the back, long strap. 
has a zipper closure. And again, a deep tuck pocket inside. Hmm? So is it, it's a light gray then, or does it have a little bit of green to it? This is a, a taupe color. A taupe, okay. So it might not show. And it's, you know, got a gusset to it as well. So you can see. And can, can she see the design again? Design on it. Two masks, two sinufu ah. masks with okay. an ankh in, in the middle. Okay. But if she would, uh, you know, contact me, email me or whatever, you know, I can take photographs of it that it would show up better. Mm -hmm. So and it's not on it. the website? It is not. It is not. Okay. Um, yeah, man, your photography has improved so much. I mean, thank you. Thank you. You're, 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 it's really improved. Another skill we've developed. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, actually, uh, the initial photographs, my son was taking them with a camera. And I found that the uh, the cell phone camera is gives a much better resolution. Than yes. Well, it doesn't give a better resolution. Yeah, yeah I was using a Canon, a nice yeah. Canon, but, you know, getting all kinds of glares and glitches. And you put that camera on it, click, and... It, Hey. <laughs> I know that there's both camps that feel different ways, but all my pictures I take with my phone. Yeah, I mean, you can't beat it. It's like amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Fern wanted to ask, how much was the bag? Uh, it's $525. So. Okay, there you go, Fern. You know, the other uh, Black History Month note I wanted to mention is that um, many of us, you know, read, you know, books by uh, Diop and, and Dr. Clark and John Jackson and um, and all these illuminary, illuminary scholars, uh, Jake Carruthers, Asa Hilliard. But today, their lectures, the lectures of these master teachers are on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> so yes, you can are. get a PhD education, listening to the scholarship of these master teachers, you know, in the comfort of your living room, uh, mm -hmm. any time of day. And at the time when, you know, these right wing nuts are challenging what is being taught about us in schools, we don't need them anymore. We, you know, send your nieces and nephews to YouTube. To YouTube, right? And <laughs> because <It's all> the, <laughs> because this stuff was never being taught in class anyway. If you were in in high school, there was like a, a paragraph or a page on slavery and Reconstruction, the Civil Rights Movement, and moving on. That was it. You know, if you wanted to know about Black history, you had to do that yourself, and we still do. And Right. And why would we want them to teach our children about us? Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. like I said, this is amazing. Let me get just Google, go to YouTube and search John Henry Clark, Dr. John Henry Clark, and that'll open up a portal to an amazing, uh, you know, series of of lectures and and discussions, and you know. Everything that he says, he's citing the sources, and you can go to the sources. But this is the absolute truth, and they're basically telling us that we invented the world, mm -hmm. and you yeah. know, we and we're still sending our children to these schools to be miseducated, um, and it's not necessary anymore. You know, you don't even need to go to college anymore. You just need to turn on your TV <laughs> and get the truth. <laughs> That's the beauty of YouTube. There was a time when you you know you would seek out some of these teachers. You would hear that they were speaking somewhere, and you you'd go run over to hear them, or you'd get your videotapes. You'd buy That's your right. videotapes and watch those. That's right. Now everything is on YouTube. Everything, everything. Yeah. Francis Wells and Dr. Clark, Dr. Yeah. Ben. Yeah. Hey, uh, Sheikh Anta Diop. I mean, everybody. Uh, African scholars, Caribbean scholars, everybody's up there now. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's just the that's just the, the <laughs> academic scholarship. There's music performances by everybody. I mean, you know, come on. 
<laughs> one. And the last point I wanted to make is this concept that I want to share that I'm calling cultural curation. And what it means is that somebody other than us is deciding what we think, what we focus on, what we're concerned about, um, what is supposedly important. Um, and through the news media, through the entertainment industry, you know, they're presenting these things. And it's like going to a restaurant uh, and somebody giving you a menu with only one thing on it and you're hungry, you know, so hey, I'll take that, you know, and in reality, up today. Right. <laughs> uh, but in reality, you need to decide for yourself what you're going to eat today. That's what we do. Why would we be letting somebody else tell us? I mean, listen, turn on the radio, turn on the TV. 90% of what they're talking about has nothing to do with us. I, I mean, you know, hey, I hope Putin doesn't, you know, invade <laughs> Ukraine. But what, what the hell am I supposed to do about that? <laughs> uh, the stock market, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, interest rates. Uh, I mean, on and on and on. Just They just load up all these things that we should be dealing with. Uh, Congress and the politicians, and this one said this, and this one said that, and Donald Trump did this, and hey, you know, that's it somebody takes else's. A lot of, it takes up a lot of mental energy when you could lot. be focusing on other things, you know, really pick and choose what you want to put your attention on. So that's the, that's the thought that I'm sharing. Make sure that you are curating yes. your own life and not responding to somebody else throwing something at you. This whole thing about this uh, vaccination, resistance, hesitation, all that, that was a, 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 a conscious plan inserted into the public discourse by some right-wing fanatics. I mean, and you have people who I used to think were very intelligent espousing some of these things that they're picking up off of the internet from people they don't even know when they know people who they could go and ask to find real information so be careful about the sources that you select and the thing is if you don't know these people don't trust them you know if you don't know you know don't trust them and they've yeah. got schemes to try to get into your head and get you on that plantation, hey, you know, if, if it's not you or somebody you know, hey, be very suspicious. That's all I got to say. Well, yeah, stay are, away from the crazies. The, <laughs> there are the pros and cons of the internet. You've got, like you just talked about how you can go see John Henry, Henry Clark. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there as well. So it's a like, lot. you know, it's kind of listen to your inner counsel as well, just, you know, and then you'll feel your way through as what feels right and what doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it sounds your eyes open. It is Stay alert. alert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we have come to the end of uh, day one of Black History Bam. We have ended it beautifully with Marvin Sin always showing beautiful work and dropping some great jewels. We love that. And, uh, we get ready for day two. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you all. Okay, all right. take care. It's a pleasure having you on. Okay, all we right. exhale, we go and we rest up and get ready for day two tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we start at um, same time tomorrow, 5.45 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Yes, that's right. 445 Central Standard Time. Okay, so <laughs> check in with us. We start off with Sister Fire, like I mentioned before, uh, showing a men's collection and we go all the way to the end till 930 uh, with textile art, with jewelry, with hats, 
um, and clothing. So check us out. Yeah, folk art with the new girl. Folk right? art, yes. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Uh, we yeah. hope you enjoyed today. I know I did. I hope you guys did also. So <laughs> we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Is there anything we can do for anybody before we leave? Uh, shout at us right now. Come on, talk to us. We're here. Nobody got anything to say? I know it takes a minute to type some stuff into the computer, you know, um, especially if you don't use your phone to talk to it. <clears throat> or you're not using Siri or whatever those other services are. They got all kinds of tech stuff where you just talk to it and, and it relays it to it, right? <laughs> all right, I guess, no, right. I guess nobody's <laughs> there. Uh, William, I miss you, brother. I don't know what happened to you tonight. I haven't seen you. <laughs> he will be back tomorrow, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. We shall see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we're getting some comments. See, there they are. See, Fern, you're going to be uh, in transit. I hope your ring is at, in, at your mother's when you make it to New York tomorrow. Uh, hope before you go off to Tanzania. So... Uh, I hope you have a safe trip and a great uh, trip ahead of you. And thank you, uh, Saudi. Sauda. All right. Thank you for saying great show as always. I hope you found something to purchase. I hope you supported one of the artists, if not two out there. And uh, tune in with us tomorrow. Let your people know who are not on Facebook. Go check out YouTube. We're on youtube.com forward slash Black Artist Marketplace. So thank you guys. Have a great evening and we will see you tomorrow. All right. Peace.